we have Bob Costa. Bob, come on down. This is going to be a little bit of a downer compared to what I just, uh, don't follow Dick, all right? So I'm talking, I'm talking to my buddy Abe. This is around 67, 68. He and his father and his brother just bought a, uh, a jeans store. And a couple of months after they opened, they started selling leather vests. I thought they were really chintzy. I didn't like them. Abe said he was selling a shitload of them, uh, and, I'm, and he's getting $20, $25 from them. It was a lot of money back then. And uh, I pick up a vest, and I say, this is just a piece of shit. How can you ask $25 for this? And it doesn't even have a lining. Well, a big argument followed, and, and he said something like, okay, let me see you make a better one. And I said, okay, oh, yeah, well, I'm going to do it. And it was on. I'm walking out of the store, and I go, why the fuck did I say that? I have no idea how to make a vest. So I said, well, I had a shot. I noticed a little smile on his father's face that sort of suggested that he thought I could pull it off. So I go home, and I'm trying to figure out what to do. And the next day, I go down to the uh, leather center in New York, leather district. And I'm running around all the place. I can't find what I want. I didn't even know what I wanted. And the uh, last place I went into, I see this old guy there. And I said, excuse me, I'm, I'm looking for this kind of leather. Can you help me with this? And either he pitied me, or he said, this is the guy I had the dream about last night that I saw that piece of shit leather I had in the back that I didn't throw away last week. So um, he says, I think I have something in the back. I'll, let me go see if it's still there. So he comes back out with this piece of leather. It's like a gray suede leather. And um, I didn't know if it was the right thing, but I didn't know where else to go, so I took it. I went to the garment district. I got a hot pink satin lining, and I went home and... Uh, sat down on the floor in my bedroom, and I started tearing pieces of newspaper apart and drawing things on them that looked like vest shapes and cutting them out with scissors and fitting them on my body and then taping them up. And uh, eventually, I got to something that looked like it could work. Um, so um, I went and I started uh, to the uh, garment denture again. I got some thread, and I started sewing the lining into the vest. and. Uh, Anyhow, all this time, my buddy Abe has been saying to me the whole time, so how's the project going? And I go, hey, no problem, I'm on it, you know? And uh, so anyhow, I, uh, I, I get to a point where I have it made, and I put it in this bag, and I go down to the store, and I go, and I start to lift it out of the bag, and as I'm lifting it out, I can see Abe's face, and he's going, I can't believe he did it. But as the vest came out completely, I could tell that the look completely changed, and he's going, what the hell is that piece of shit he has in his hand? <laughs> and I could see his father looking at me. He had a completely different kind of look. Either I reminded him of some kind of childhood trauma that he had, <laughs> or he was taking pity on me and just couldn't wait to get, get me out of the problem I was in. And he says, let me take a look at that. And he looks at it a little bit, and he says, uh, Wow, you know, I, I can see a couple of places here where maybe it could use a stitch or two. Let me take it from you. You know, you go take a walk. I, I'm busy now. Give me a couple hours, come back. Now, Abe's father was like a maestro European tailor. Okay, so I'm, I'm leaving. I come back and, uh, about three hours later. You ever have this experience where you were given a project to do and your parent or your teacher had taken it from you and turned it into something magnificent, handed it back to you and said, look what you did? <laughs> it was kind of like that, you know? It was beautiful. I mean, it was just magnificent. And uh, so I'm looking at it and he says, so how much you want for this? And I said, what? I mean, you're going to sell it in your store? He goes, yeah. I said, jeez, it looks so much better than those other vests now. I, I don't know, maybe 35, 40? He goes, yeah, he looks at me like this. He goes, well, you know what? I, why don't you just leave it and we'll see what happens. A couple of days later, I get a phone call and Abe is saying, hey, I got a guy here. He wants to buy the vest, but he only wants to give like $35. No, $30. I said, well, can you ask him for like 35 and see what happens? And yeah, yeah. he said, sold. So I am so completely excited. I said, I can't believe what's happening. I said, is your father there? He said, no, he just went home. I said, well, I'm going to come down tomorrow and thank him for what he did. And I did profusely. Um, that man opened up my wings of creativity. He created an artist out of nothing. 
So I decided I was going to continue with this thing, and I went and I rented a little space in the store uh, in the Lower East Side, and I got a couple of other guys, a couple of other artists come in, and we started making bags and garments. And one day this lady comes walking in the store and thought she was in a different leather shop. She made a mistake, and I guided her to the right place and told her where to go, and she leaves. Shortly afterwards, she came back and said, hey, listen, I'm a buyer from Henry Bendel, and I love your stuff. And I want you to go see my boss tomorrow. I want you to take your stuff and take it down. I think he might buy a few pieces. Well, I did. And he did buy a few pieces. He bought them all. And he ordered even more. And so then, for whatever reason, I mean, other people started calling. And we started selling to lots of different stores in New York. And then we got into Women's Wear Daily. We got into Men's Wear Magazine. We got shooting uh, coming up photo shoots for Glamour magazine, Mademoiselle, all of the big fashion magazines at the time. And we were working our buns off. We got a bigger space and we decided we we're going to just devote ourselves to these things and we took two months off and we just made and made and made and made. And the night before the shoot, we had everything ready. We had it all set up in beautiful, um, you know, lit things. Everything was hung up. It looked like a, like a museum of leather. It was beautiful. And we went out to eat and sleep, and uh, the phone ringing that next morning, boy, that was like, it sounded so sharp and hollow, and uh, I picked it up, and I hear this voice saying, hey, I just walked by the shop, and the, the door is open and sort of hanging off the hinges, and maybe you want to come down here and take a look and see what's going on here. I went, what? What did you just say? Can we say that again, please? Really? I... Quickly, I, I hung up the phone, I ran out in the street, and I'm putting my clothes on as I'm running the street to the store, and I get there, and it was the worst disaster. If there was not one piece left, not one, everything was gone, stolen. All our work, everything that we had hoped and dreamed, all the stuff that we had together, we were like a team. We loved each other, and that was all like taken from us. And... Uh, I didn't know what to do. I called up and called the shoot off, of course, the photo shoot. And um, I couldn't call them up and tell them, so I walked to where they were. And I went inside and uh, I told them. And uh, to see, you know, men, grown men crying uh, was very sad. And uh, I could see that they needed to have some alone time. They didn't want me and my sad story there, so I left and said, I'd come back and we'd decide how we would carry on. And I uh, came back sometime later. And the mood hadn't changed. And, and I just said, come on, come on, we can do it. This is, I mean, you know, yeah, it was really bad. And we got hurt, but it was just like a flesh wound. You know, we'll, we'll just do it again. They loved our stuff, you know. And, uh, and no, no silence, no answer. And I did it again. Come on, we can do it. I know we can. But no, we couldn't. What we had was killed that day, was murdered and um, they couldn't carry on. And so, you know, things fade, but they don't go away. And um, I wasn't going to let that happen to me. I wasn't going to let thieves, you know, take my creativity from me. And, uh, and I did carry on. I did, and I went and made much more, many more beautiful things over many, many years. Um, uh, I even made some things while I was here when I first came up here. Um, but that's my story. Thank you.